I run out of things to say. How many people have ever had that problem? It should be pretty much everyone in the room, okay? <laughs> like, unless you're some, like, unique, hey, I'm just Mr. Cool and I can yeah. zing. Yeah, you know, what are you on, TV or something? Like, uh, and some people, look, are just natural you know, theater kids or something. Uh, you know, <laughs> when you're trying to like create a vibe or you're trying to go up and you're trying to say something that's not logical, it's like a blank sheet of paper, right? So you might get a sort of almost writer's block. It, it's, you're paralyzed by choice. In fact, has anyone here ever done an improvisational like workshop or take an improv class? A lot of times in those classes, and I've, I've taken a couple of those, I've also taken a couple of stand, it, it's funny if you ever take one of those, there's always like one or two people in the class that are just like completely insane. <laughs> like, and this is like their outlet to meet people and they're like, the last one I took, it was this lady and she had this like dog and the dog was like, it would just like try to bite her constantly. And she's like, <laughs> and, she, and she'd get up, she'd give her a little like stand up and I'd be like, people in the room are like, is she okay? Like, <laughs> like is she gonna like kill us all or hurt herself? Like it was kind of frightening. So yeah, if you ever go to one of those, you, there's always one or two of those guys. In those classes, very often they'll work with things like gibberish or, you guys know what gibberish is? It's, it's a made up language, made out like where there ha it has no verbal meaning. It's a syntax of noise, not, not meaning. So, right? Like that's just, gib it's just noise. Now, many people, when they're exercising with gibberish, they can't say a single syllable of it at first because they're so afraid of, of saying like a wrong answer that when there is no right or wrong answer, they're just completely at a loss. Yeah. And so it's kind of a similar, a, a similar issue when you're trying to communicate like a vibe to somebody or you're trying to just communicate in a free flowing manner because the content, and I know this is something that gets hammered a lot and you, you may or may not believe it, it's something, again, you might believe in, like, okay, I see how that would make sense, but you haven't internalized it. It's like, the content is largely irrelevant. It's, it's the feeling behind the content that is attractive to others or repulsive to them. And how do you craft that with the face, the voice, and body? Now, those are the, those are the only means of communication that we have. I, I can't like, you know, maybe well, e I could email you or something, but you know, uh, like I can't, I can't do mental telepathy. Anything that's in here needs to be given external expression by the airflow coming out of my flapping meat hole, right? The muscles of my face and how they're contorting to give specific packets of emotional information related to these noises. And then again, indicating descriptive, enhancing gesture. That, that's it. That's literally it. So, however, you see most people, not most people, many people, they'll have, like they come in the program and they have what I call facial armoring or, or sad face is what we call it, uh, serious anxious deadpan, right? It's like, it looks kind of like this. They're like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like smile more. They can't tell what's going on in, behind your eyes. It's a danger signal. It's like, does this guy want to stab me or kiss me? I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I've, sometimes I'm talking to these people, it's like quite unnerving. It's like, dude, what the hell is this person thinking? You can't get a read on them. And, and if you can't get a read on them, it's disturbing. So they're like, and I'm like, smile more. They'll be like. Yeah, the twitch. <laughs> like, dude, I, I had, the last time I was in Austin, I had this dude who uh, made this face like this. And, uh, Literally, I was like, dude, you gotta, you, you gotta like break out, you have facial armoring. Now, of course, it doesn't matter, you can tell him this. It's, it's not gonna happen overnight. Like, oh, he told, huh, he told me I have facial armoring. Problem solved, I'm gonna drop decades of negative counter conditioning and suddenly become facially free because I intellectually understand it would be beneficial for me to do so. Thanks, Jeff. Like, no, he understands it. And I'm like taking photos of him from like, like in the set. So, cause you, you can't see your own face most of the time, right? <laughs> But he's doing this, and I'm like, yo, and, and he would just talk to these people. It was out here on, on Radio Fact during the day on Sunday, and they're like, they initially like, oh, hey, party time, Sunday fun day. And then they're like, <laughs> okay, you, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, not, this is not fun. And, and the funny thing is, this dude, he resembles the actor Jonathan Bernthal uh, from The Punisher. 
Um, so I'm like, you are like the Punisher, except the punishment is when they have to talk to you. <laughs> like that's, that, <laughs> and I, I've told him that, uh, and he, yeah, he, he, in fact, I said that uh, he was in attendance at some other conference recently, and I said, he's like, why didn't you say it was me? I'm like, I didn't want to put you on the spot. He's like, put me on the spot, bro. Because uh, I guess he's got better, better with it. But, so, the, but, but basically, what, like, so it's serious, anxious, deadpan. Serious. This is serious fucking business. Like, what, what is at stake here is of the ultimate import. Th this is very important. This isn't some casual bullshit where I'm like, chipping off at some rando at the bar. Like, no, no, this, is, this has like far reaching ramifications for my life. This will affect me to my grave. Whatever happens in this interaction is, is serious shit. Anxious, oh golly, I hope it works. Oh golly, if it does, I, I hope it works. I hope it works. And then deadpan, what I don't show can't hurt me. Right, what I don't show can't hurt me. Same thing with like, with the voice. You won't, you, you won't necessarily get a monotone but people will tend to speak in certain predictable cadences that repeat again and again and again. It's like da 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 da, um, with a touch of monotone maybe thrown in. And then and then like in, in terms of like kinesthetic, they'll just be very a lot of physical tension that's un that they're not even aware of. Like they might have you know some like locked shoulders. There might be like locked knees. There might be weird finger hand activity jaw clenching, there might be like shifting from foot to foot, hands in the pockets, um, stuff like this. And that's the interesting thing. They're not even aware of this most likely because they have <coughs> deemed these behaviors, th these protective behaviors to be useful and necessary for so long that now they have, they're largely below their threshold of awareness. They're not even aware they're doing it. And one guy can tell you, yo, you have facial arm, you look like the fucking Punisher. Uh, another, like, but if they're like four, like he might be like, oh, Jeff's being a jerk. Or maybe he's right, but I don't know. But if like others are also, um, you know, verifying this, that might be enough to make him, okay, start to, start to take action on it and start to release that. And again, it's not gonna happen overnight. It's important to persist, but awareness is the first step. And look, that is why we're here. We're here to develop awareness of these various mechanisms of inhibition, because I think for the most part, you might say, like, what do you say? I'm stifled. Oh, you're stifled. Cool. And I would say that previously to these students who would go up and they knew technique. They were saying the same things I was saying. They were doing the same things that I was doing, but they were not getting the same reactions from people. And I was like, why? They're saying the same things. And so I felt for me, this is a whole in my coaching ability, it's like, I'm not able to adequately address this for these, these people. I'd get, and you know what I'd say to them? I would say exactly what you said. I'd say, you seem kind of stifled. Um, smile more, go in with bigger energy. What, they're like, what, thanks Jeff. What the hell does this mean? Like, it's not helpful. It's vague, it's subjective. It, it's just making them feel more judged which is what caused these fucking inhibitions in the first place. So it's compounding the problem. And at the same time, it's not giving them any clear descriptive means of making the desired change. So again, over the past five years or so, I wanted to get very, very specific and make it so that these feedback or these, these criticisms or these descriptions are being verbalized in a way that is actionable and then furthermore makes that desired change available to the person. So again, we want to look at the mechanisms of inhibition. So what is, what is the mechanism? What happens when you get stifled? Well, because it, the thing is, it's not, this isn't verbalized in your head. It's not like some, okay, now it's time to execute the stifling pattern brain. Like, it's not being thought out. It's this like right-brained, culturally conditioned error that simply is not, is not verbalized. So what is... Well, first of all, where does it arise from? Now, my buddy Julian talks about, a lot about the root causes of these inhibitions. Now, anyone who follows Julian want to hazard a guess to what that is? Trauma. Now, what is trauma? What does that mean? Too much stimulus you can't handle it. Too much stimulus can't handle it? Can't, like, interpret Past bad experiences. Past bad experiences. Negative social conditioning. Negative social counter conditioning. Horse shame. Horse shame? Horse shame? <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Horseshit. Horseshit. We do things differently out here in Texas. So, uh, but 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 basically, um, no. All of those things are. I think all of those things play a part. So, you know, we have negative social counter conditioning, which which starts at a at a very young age. You get that from what? You get that from your parents. You get that from the educational system. You get that from your peer group. You get that from the media. You get that from corporate culture, possible religious upbringing. And like, I mean, there's a lot of different kinds of so-called negative social conditioning. And if we break those down, what are some characteristics that, that you would categorize as negative social conditioning? Well, we have um, <clears throat> judgment, an addictive need to judge others and be judged by others. We have uh, negativity, desire to pick shit apart endlessly. We see that in academia. Um, we have Perfectionism. Perfectionism, yeah, that's a big one. Constantly comparing yourself against this future standard that can never be attained. So the present, you're, you're, you're sapping energy from the present moment, either in service of this imagined future or this dead past. Um, confusion. You know, especially as, as things get more and more complex in society, it's like confusion keeps power in the hands of the confusers. If that makes sense, <laughs> you know, because nobody's more controllable than a confused person. You spend most of your time doing what? Running around trying to figure stuff out, and it doesn't leave a lot of energy left over to, to actually take action. Um, blame, abdication of responsibility, um, uh, self-deceit. This is fine, that meme with the little dude in the, in the fire. This is fine. <laughs> this is fine. Again, a lot of those people who talk poorly on self-development, many of those people are in the, this is fine meme. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. There's a lot of them, but the main, I'd say the main daddy of all those is judgment. From a very young age, we're taught to be careful with our uses of energy, right? We're taught to be very careful with our uses of energy, particularly in the face. What I do teach it, coachings, I'm like, look, I want you to do one thing that's very simple this evening. When, when we go out and we, we start you know, partying, mingling with, with people, I want you to do this. When you introduce yourself, I want you to stand in front of people and look them in the eye. Can you do this this evening? Can you do that? Yeah, I can do that. Everyone says they can do it. What percentage do you think actually are able to do this? It's like 5%, 5% at best. And, and the, I used to get so mad he can, he can attest this. In fact, I would get so fucking mad <laughs> that I would just like almost have an, like an embolism or something, some aneurysm, uh, hist going to histrionics. I'd be like just, what the fuck, why can't they fucking, like, what are these fucking stupid? <laughs> 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 yeah, just going to yeah. Jail tonight. yeah, and then so I'm like, oh yeah, right. So, so, but here's the thing. I don't get mad at the people anymore. Now I get mad at the conditioning because it's the conditioning that's doing this. So again, the face, we've all heard that phrase, eyes are the windows to the soul, right? This is the mode through which we send deeply personal and, and vulnerable, quite frankly, messages about what we're thinking and feeling inside. So these messages can seem threatening to the sender, especially if you're somebody who's been guarded in your communication your whole life, and you likely have, since you were like three years old and you're in the restaurant, sit the fuck down, stop running around, stop making noise, don't cry, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So over time, you're like, look, it does not matter. The quality of the emotion does not matter. It must be controlled. It must be hidden. It doesn't matter if it's happiness, anger, it, it must be hidden. It must be controlled. So coming back to our wonderful protagonist at Buford's, who, Buf what, what is it called? Buford's Grill. You got it, yeah. But isn't, isn't there like Buford's Grill or some no, bullshit? Okay. So anyway, so at Buford's, you're like, okay, I'm going to go up now. I'm going to go up to somebody. And in order to make them continue to look at me, I can't go, so I need to like, be like, what's up? It, even, you know what I like? Recently I go, what the fuck is up? I just that the fuck. It just, it just adds a little, zzz, little, little sauce on it, you know? Uh, and, but then again, it's not just that. I can say what's up. Owen can go and say what's up. I can even then proceed to ask boring interview style questions. Do you want to know why? Because it's a proactive decision that I'm making to be more chill if I do that. Most people who are asking those boring questions and saying what's up in a, in a monotonous tone, they're doing that because they have no other, they have no choice. That's the only thing they can do. They are desperately treading water. 
hoping the questions don't run out. Where do you live? What do you do? <laughs> allergies. Allergies are bad this time. I'm like, Whoa. The allergies. <laughs> you know, they're hoping the questions don't run out. And when and the questions do run out, what happens? <laughs> Cat got your tongue. You know, you've run out. You have now officially run out of things to say. You've run out. They're done. Okay, so, and then you're like, uh, durr, 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 and you just kind of sit there on stall mode during. And then they say, they politely excuse them. So, hey, nice to meet you. I got to go meet my friends, shoot myself in the fucking face. <laughs> ni ni nice, nice to meet you. And so, <laughs> this is why you want to train like with many different styles. You want to train yourself like when like so. For example, I do an eight-week mentoring where where we go, we dig into a lot of these different modes of communication, like the face, the voice, the body, the intellect. How is that functioning? Is that a bridge or a barrier between the inner and outer? The emotional process, how is that coloring everything? What's your, what's your emotional acuity and ability to sense what other people are feeling on a moment-to-moment -moment basis? And modulate your tonality dynamically in order to kind of ride that wave or harmonize with them. How, how is your intuition flowing from inwards to outwards? Are you, are you allowing that? Or are you judging in, in process? So when we, when we isolate each of those areas and we exercise them, we're doing that for two reasons. Number one, to diagnose where the inhibitions are. So say for example, we do some weird vocal exercise and it makes you speak in these crazy, like these crazy changes in vocal tonality. By increasing the demands put upon the voice, you're increasing the inhibition as well. The inhibition will rise up to meet the increased challenge. And at that point it becomes magnified and thereby noticeable. And then you can say, okay, that's what happens when I try to go out, step out of my little box, self-imposed box with, with my voice, my face, or my body, or my intuition for that matter, or my imagination. Th that's what happens. Okay, so let's notice that. And through this continuing awareness, again, without shame, without guilt, like I fucking suck because I have these inhibitions. It's like, no, no, no. These were useful to me at one point. I don't need this anymore. Let's start to let it go. Let's start to let it go like fucking Marie Kondo. Honor your service, put in the trash, it's done, okay? Served you at one point, you don't need any more. This program is designed to give you a process to open and sustain charismatic expression with increasing consistency. Remove the obstacles, isolate the skills, exercise them separately, then put them together in a more completely realized whole. How to speak to all the issues surrounding this inner relationship between intuitive and intellectual resources is arguably the most fundamental challenge facing anyone who's attempting to improve their communication skills. So if you're looking to develop general charisma that you can apply across all areas of life, definitely check out Jeff's Charisma Mastery.